Hi and welcome back. In our previous video we continued on with some of the code for the shared functions, started with the kernel hello kind of code and the boot process and we also started um, integrating with the auxiliary registers so that we can invoke the uh, methods needed for handling the mini UART function. In this video we're going to start off with the GPIO related code and probably finish it up before we continue on to actually using the mini UART code. So let's get started with the GPIO related code. First we'll open up the data sheet here and we'll see that the GPIO related information is here section 6. So let's scroll on down to there and here we have the section here GPIO, general purpose IO, nice little diagram that shows how it's set up. And down here we have the registers. You can see they start at 70, 20, 0, 0, 0, 0. And the first set here you can see are the function select registers, followed by a reserved and two registers with pin data for output. And then the same one, a reserved and two registers with pin data for output clear. And then the level, event detect, rising edge detect. And all this same pattern of reserved and two uh, following registers goes all the way down to the clock pins. So let's go on over here to our code and we can start setting up this structure. First I'm going to put my common header, of course, and our peripheral base. So let's see, first I'm going to create a struct uh, called GPIO pin data, which will kind of model that structure of a reserved register followed by two registers with pin data. And those, then we'll just make that an array since it's always two and we're going to use that in our main GPIO reg struct here. So at the top we're actually going to have a set for our function select. And we had six registers, I believe that's all. You can ignore that first one, it's just duplicated. So we have zero through five. And then followed by that we have this struct GPIO pin data for our output set section. See right here, output set. Then we'll have an output clear. And we'll just go on and model each of those here. So output clear, level, event detect status. A rising edge detect enable our falling edge detect enable our high detect enable and our low detect enable then our async rising edge detect and our async async yeah, I spelled that wrong. Async falling edge detect. So then we're going to have this uh, reserved register here right before our pull up, pull down related information. And we have our pull up, pull down enable, and then our clock zero and one. and we're going to make that an array too since it's two of them. And let's see, we need to get the address for this. Remember starting at 70, 20, 0, 0, 0, 0. So we just need the second half of that. We're going to again create another define just like we did for the auxiliary registers. We're going to create a pointer to our main struct here. 
from the pbase address plus that value 0020000. That will be how we access the GPIO registers. So let's create some uh, user headers here. Let's go back to this mini UART. Our GPIO registers here. Go back down to our GPIO section. Remember we had these function selects here. So what we want to do is kind of look at the values for the function select. So you know the the first the top two bits are reserved, but then we have these F cell nine which shows the different values for input one for output, one zero zero for function zero, one two three four and five. The values in, aren't in order, so you'd kind of expect them, but you can see that's also repeated for each of these. So we're essentially going to have ten pins controlled by this one register. The first pin is going to be bit zero to two, then three to five, then six to eight, and so on. So this will actually control a total of ten registers, and then we have another one for the next 10 registers, and then the next 10 registers, and so on. So like you can see, we have these. This is how they're all going to be uh, set up for each of those, for each set of pins. So let's create a an enum enumeration here for those values. First, uh, first we want a pragma once. our common, our peripherals, GPIO, that'll already include our common. So we're going to create a enum here, we'll call it GPIO func. This is going to be the different GPIO function types. Again, let's look at this here. See value 0 for input, 1 for output. And we'll one for each of the functions. So we'll create one enumeration value, call it GF input equals zero, GF output equals one. We'll say GF, um, we'll call it the alt zero. It's going to be the alternate zero function was the value four. The values in the data sheets were binary numbers, so the actual value for that next one will be four then 5, then 6, then 7, and then it wraps back around to 2 and 3, or 3 and 2. So that's going to be our enumeration we'll use in our functions. So we'll have a couple of functions here. GPIO, say pin set function going to take in a U8 for the pin number and then a GPIO func type. So that'll be what we set it to. We'll go ahead and create another one here. GPIO pin enable to enable a pin. Because before you enable a pin you have to actually turn its clock on and set it, set how it should work. So we'll just take those and we'll create a C file here gpio.c include our gpio.h header and create an empty functions for these for right now okay let's go back to here remember we had Ten of these for each of these function select registers. So ten for that first. Twenty, thirty, forty, fifty. So yeah, what we what we want to kind of do is see how we can pull out three bits for each one. So we can use a little math here to make this function easier to figure out 
which pin to select. So we'll say the bit start equals pin number times 30, or sorry, times 3, mod 30. will give us where the bit starts in the register and the actual register is just going to be the pin number divided by 10. So now we can create a little selector here. So this is our U32 red value. We're going to grab the function select at the reg value. Now we need to do some bit manipulation. I'm going to assume that you understand how bit manipulation works. If not, let me know in the comments and I can go more in depth on it. But essentially we're going to clear out three bits for that bit section, shift it over, and then OR in the value that we want to turn on just those bits in that specific register. Now we need to go back and write to the register same register. Now we're going to give it that new selector low value. And that will be our pin set function. So for pin enable, let's go back again to the data sheet. This is useful to understand how to read data sheets. You'll see we have the section here for the pull up, pull down, enable, and the clock 0 and 1. We can go over here to the details for those registers see here we have the clock registers. Now notice there's this section right under here it says how this clock register works. So in order to actually enable the cross register there's a few f steps to follow. Write to the PUPD, wait 150 cycles, write to the clock that you want to modify, wait 150 cycles, write again to the pull up pull down register, and then right again to remove that clock signal. It's just a step that you have to go through that will help the uh, microcontroller know what you want to do with that GPO, GPIO pin. So let's start by our pull up, pull down, enable. We want to write zero to it. Then we want to delay the 150 cycles. include our utils.h so we have delay. Now we want to write to that specific clock. And remember there's only two clocks so we really just need to take our pin number divide it by 32. There's one bit for each pin. And we just set the uh, value to 1 shifted over by the pin number mod 32. Now, delay 150, not seconds, uh, 150 ticks. And then we again write to the PUPD enable. And then finally write to the clock again, same pin number. And just zero to reset it. So that will enable our GPIO pin so that we can start using it. Remember, these are the steps here in the data sheet. Okay, so now we're done with the GPIO related code here. So this is a good stopping point. And in our next video, uh, we're going to start with the actual mini UART implementation, which will actually use these auxiliary and GPIO um, structures that we created and, and uh, utility functions. So again, thanks for watching. If you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.